Yeah, yeah, I went like oh. All right. So we're going to talk about um, Love and Pop, um, Hideaki Arno's first uh, live action, live action film. Uh, well, if you don't know who Hideaki Arno is, well, he's basically the guy who directed Evangelion. Th- that's what he will be known for forever, uh, whether, whether he likes it or not. Um, so, um, so today we have um, South Asian and I'm Sig. here. Sorry, sorry yes. about that, guys. Right, and Sig uh, Neo Zeon. I'll just call him uh, Sig. Thank you, thank you. So, all right. So, okay. Uh, Got it. Yeah, this uh, this, you... is, um, this uh, discussion is going to be uh, what 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 did I just watch? Uh, <laughs> yes. So uh, even though like even though the uh, the uh, subtext was like quite you know was uh, pretty like yes. pretty straightforward. Um, yes. Yeah, so yeah, shall we sum up the plot first? Because it's an ironically very simple plot. All right. Yeah. Uh... All right. <laughs> yeah. The, 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 yeah. The plot is this: sixteen-year-old uh, girl in Japan takes place in the nineties in Japan, then modern times. Uh, she takes a train ride into Shibuya, uh, hangs out with her friends, and they decide to do a lot of. Uh, what's generously called subsidized dating in Japan. In which, yeah. Yeah, uh, which, speak. which yeah. basically involves uh, older men, uh, usually older men, paying young women, including 16-year-olds, to be around them and uh, go on pseudo-dates with them and uh, sometimes just turns into basic prostitution. And she and the girls are very used to doing this, and so they have a couple guys treat them to food. Uh, some guy, like, loans them a phone. I, I, do not, I do not think that the protagonist is used to it, right, though? Hiromi. Yeah, I don't think Hiromi is totally used to it, but her friends are. No, no, that uh, that 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 day is is um, her first time. And... Okay. Yeah. And and if they just do that for a while, and this whole time there's a couple characters bemoaning like the state of the youth, but Hiromi just ignores it. She finds this topaz that she wants in this jewelry store, and she decides she really wants it. So, by the way, by the, way the, the, uh, the Love and Pop is an adaptation of a novel by Ryo Murakami called uh, Topaz, Topaz 2. Yeah. Okay. But, yeah, she wants to get this topaz. Uh, they managed to actually get the 120,000 yen they need just by singing karaoke with this guy and uh, eating and chewing grapes, on the grapes, right? Chewing on grapes and giving them his their saliva, which is weird. But uh, Hiromi, who feels a little insecure and a lot like Ano, uh, doesn't want uh, wants everything to be equal amongst the friends. She doesn't want this to be a source of tension. Uh, she wants to split the 120,000 yen four ways. Uh, there's, there's this really nice scene where she's breaking down uh, about it, and everyone just sort of awkwardly stares around her and isn't sure what to say about it. Um, so then she decides... Uh, yeah, I wonder how insecure Anna felt when he was like doing all his like, upskirts. <laughs> all his all his upskirt shots. And, uh, yeah, all, all there's even, the one. Uh, there's, uh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah there's, we'll, um, we'll, we'll, we'll get to yeah, that. Yeah. We'll get to that. Um, there's um, also a, a, a new invention in this film, and this is like a, a, a sneak peek for later. Um, uh-huh. But um, but there's actually a, a, a down skirt shot, which is uh, quite impressive. And, uh, by, 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 by the way, on set, uh, throughout the film on set, uh, there was a... a, a, a uh, JAV, JAV, Japanese adult video, if you know what that means. Uh, mm. uh, director. Yeah, I do friend. know. After, after Husky huh. told me. 
Ah, okay. Yeah, so it's basically a porn uh, director p- a, a point of view because that, that's something which came from Japan apparently. The the whole um, you know when the camera is on the guy, uh, you know what I mean. And yeah. um, so so that might have affected some of the weird ca- camera angles. Um, yeah. Speaking of speaking of camera angles, um, I watched uh, that uh, that documentary which you sent me, Sieg. The documentary mm-hmm. about the, the the making of uh, oh, no. yeah, four point oh four point oh yeah, <laughs> which um, and, and the 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 last uh, rebuild movie, Evangelion rebuild movie, and um, w- one of the things which he said the uh, um. If if you can't remember, it was about um, angles and. Uh... Oh yeah, uh, this whole part where he just gets a whole bunch of actors in mocap, and he starts taking shots from every angle because his whole thing is angles. His whole thing is cinematography. He wants to find the most aesthetically pleasing angle. Yeah. Very ano. Um, yeah, I, I guess. Which I mean, you see tons in this film. There's all sorts of creative angles. Like, there's literally a camera uh, inside a microwave, and you see a character taking something out from a microwave. Interesting stuff. Probably the most interesting part of the movie, almost. Uh, yeah, it's a very simple movie. And uh, uh, by the way, the yeah. whole th- the whole thing was uh, shot on. Um camcorders, uh, you know, portable hand, hand cameras. I, I can I, believe that. The uh, quality, uh, the video quality is just sort of all right. I, well, I, I kind what, of... Um, for the 90s, like, like, the video quality is awful. <laughs> Which is, like, um, I was going to make a joke. Yeah, like, this uh, this, this um, entire film is shot on camcorders, so obviously that's true, right? Um, yeah, I, I, guess, um, I guess that it's fine. Um, it's sort of um, I don't know. It does make sense in in a way because because, because our main character is you know is uh, has a camera with her um, all the yeah, time she, and, is, and is photographing things. Yeah, she talks a um, little bit about how uh, she really doesn't like how temporary everything is. Like friends just drift away, and then you make new friends, and she has this irreconcilable feeling of. Nothing really matters. She feels estranged from the whole world, which is part of the reason she even gets into this stuff. Yes, yes. It, it's not. It's not just her friends, but even um, in the monologue at the at the start, she literally literally says that uh, uh, it's also her basically people's desires and and feelings. Uh, like uh, like she talked about how she watched uh, um, a documentary about. Um, Anne Frank, uh, whatever, uh, Holocaust girl, um, and uh, she she was sad. But the next morning, like, yeah, th- th- that's all. It's all right now. Like, so, 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 so that that is that is also why she wants to get that ring. Um, yes, she that's states to du- she states directly that if you don't act on your desire now, your desire will be gone. So act on it now. Yes. Um, it, I mean, it's pre- pretty blatant what the message is. Um, oh, it's it, it's an <laughs> agonizing film to watch. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll finish it up. Basically, she goes on subsidized date with, I guess you might say, more serious people. Uh, one guy is this construction worker that works at night and sort of a weirdo. He plays it off as uh, he just wants her to go to a video rental uh, to show to the shopkeeper that was weirded out by him that he actually has a girlfriend. But uh, he ends up get, becoming so desperate, uh, even though he didn't mean to, that he just pulls her in and has uh, Hiromi give, him, uh, give uh, him a hand job in the middle of the video store. And Hiromi's disgusted and runs away. And then, even after that, she decides to call another person. And uh, this guy talks with her a little bit, uh, ha- wants to go to... Captain Eel. Uh, yes. Cap- was that Captain Eel? Was that his name? 
Captain E O. Um, they have yeah, they Captain said, E X. Yeah, I was that supposed to be Captain Etchy? No, no, that, that was supposed to be Captain E O from. Um, it's from um, Disneyland. Uh, oh. Michael, J Michael Jackson did one of those. So uh, one of his uh, vanity project uh, movie things where like he's he's the fucking hero saving. Uh, Saving the universe by uh, break dancing or whatever, uh, as part as, as part of uh, as part of one of the attractions, and um, he's Captain Eel. Um, okay, that, that's a short film uh, as well. You can find it on, on YouTube. Um, and uh, but uh, if you go to, but it's they, they don't long, it's no longer there uh, in Disney parks. But uh, if you had gone there, it would have been in 3D. Um, yeah. And um, that uh, that puppet uh, fastball, um, that that's also one of the, um, I guess, uh, members of the crew uh, in C Captain Eos uh, uh, spaceship thing. I, I'm, I'm not sure whether it was actually directed by George Lucas or something, uh, but but it's very Star Wars uh, kind of kind of a feel to it. Um, did you watch it? Uh, anyway, uh, yeah. Go, yeah, okay, yeah. Captain Eeyore uh, takes her to a love hotel. She sort of talks with him. They have a nice conversation. He, uh, 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 she ends up mending his uh, piglet, and then Fuck while, he... oh, was it yes. someone? Yeah, it doesn't matter. It, it's, it's, yeah, okay. Uh, and uh, she decides, uh, and as she's. Uh, decides to go into the bath in order to freshen up. Uh, he all of a sudden comes upon her, and she is obviously freaked out. There's this entire POV angle where you're watching it from her perspective, and he basically rants at her that, "What the hell are you doing with your life? You're uh, do you really think that no one else cares about you? That no one else would." care to see you like this? Are you really degrading yourself so? And uh, he he admits that his original plan was to actually tase her, rape her like a fish, and then uh, steal her money and leave. But uh, she uh, was so nice, to, reasonably nice to him, and he, uh, and he feels kind of guilty about even trying to do such a thing that he decides... No, I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to walk away. And uh, and after telling Hiromi, like, you shouldn't be doing this either. And it leaves Hiromi just sort of crying naked in the, uh, in the bathroom. And then she decides, sort of like spiritually, she was given this uh, cell phone to rent. And she decides that rather than attempting to purchase the topaz or anything like that, she decides to return the phone. And uh, then she goes home to her parents, uh, who are not the least bit suspicious. And she, she mopes a bit about how having such nice parents can be really... Uh, can be really oppressive, but at the same time, she appreciates them. And that's sort of the end of the movie. There's this weird thing where suddenly it's a train sequence, and then the girls are just sort of walking uh, through an alleyway that looks like it's out of Ghost in the Shell. And uh, that's the credits. Yes. Um, it's uh, That's also a, a beach episode. Uh, did you see it? Mm hmm Yeah, there's a little... Oh, oh, like, in the extras? Yes, yes. Yeah, I saw that. I don't know what relevance, why they filmed that, or what it has to do with the movie. Uh, it's, a maybe... yes. it's, just, it's just a rule. You you will always have to have at least at least one beach episode. If you don't, I, you I, fail. I, I see, I see. Um, basically, the character... Um, I watched uh, the making of a documentary, uh, which is uh, which is available with uh, sub the making of uh, Love and Pop documentary, which is two two parts and it's available on uh, on YouTube. 
with, with, with English subtitles on a YouTube channel called uh, um, um, Anno Cinema. And uh, basically, they um, well, that, that's what the, what the documentary claims anyway. Uh, they have, the, doc, the documentaries are kind of filmed in a weird way because it's, um, uh, it's from the point of view of somebody uh, in the crew. Um, so the, the first documentary is, so, so the, there are two parts. The first part is by um, uh, some, uh, I guess, somebody, somebody new uh, who, who messes up. Because apparently they claim that in the script, Originally, the story was supposed to end uh, with them going to the beach because, um, uh, if, if you if you notice, uh, if you noticed um, earlier in the film, uh, they, they talked about like uh, going on a trip or whatever to the beach. Yeah, getting swimsuits. I remember. Yes, and uh, but uh, basically, the, the guy who um, monologues uh, the first part of the of the making of documentary claims that he he dropped uh, the film um, in, in in the sea um, and because of that it, it wasn't it wasn't good enough to be used uh, in um, in the film but we, we don't yeah. really know if, if, if it's true or not uh, and uh, yeah I mean, the, the second second part is was kind of funny too because uh, um, well, it, apparently, well, well, the guy who, who films it, um, who claims to be a member of the Japanese Communist Party, a, a fruit-loving uh, yes. member. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we see, uh, like, the second guy they go on subsidized date with, uh, who just wants to make, like, a home dinner for them that's of nice quality. Um, they and they no, walk I, in, I, 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 and there's yeah, this Communist Party uh, flag right on his... Right on his Wall. I see. I see. I'm not surprised. Um, uh, but, but but I'm talking about uh, a member of the crew, ah. and uh, apparently he was tasked uh, by the producer to film uh, Anno breaking down uh, because because uh, l- let's face it, uh, uh, that's what like everybody who watches uh, Anno's uh, making of uh, documentaries. Uh, that's quite a few, I think. The first one which he made was uh, for the end of Evangelion. Um, Did they make but, one of that uh, documentary? Yes. Oh, I'd love to see that. It's uh, by uh, uh, these documentaries, quote unquote documentaries, are basically just a, a bunch of footage uh, from the movies being made, um, okay. basically as as promotional material. Um, mm-hmm. and, and, um, Arno apparently got the idea from doing that um, for Love and Pop because he also did it for the end of Eva. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, so I think... Yeah. Could... I, I guess sort of like, what was you guys' feelings watching the movie? How did it... I guess, how did it affect you? What were you thinking while in the middle of watching it? I, I I thought that uh, it looked uh, pretty neat. Uh, I I know that uh, the quality was uh, is bad or whatever, um, but uh, I, I I I kind of liked it. And for for anybody who cares, uh, the camcorder which they used uh, was a Sony VX one thousand. Um. So, yeah. So uh, other than that, um, uh, I guess. I guess um, uh, there's this meme about uh, how Japan is uh, like further than us when it comes to comes to the comes to the uh, degeneracy or whatever, and I and I guess um, w- w- one of the things which kind of struck me was that uh, the, the mobile phone which which you mentioned earlier because um, they, they were basically l- landed one uh, that uh, yeah they got from the from some guy, I think he's supposed to be a director or something. It doesn't really matter. From some other, from an adult, basically. Who, so basically, mobile phones were still rare back then. 
Yes. And the, the, well, the first thing that the, <laughs> that the girls think to do <laughs> when they get the mobile phone um, <laughs> is basically to uh, to sell themselves uh, for for ma- money. So I guess I guess that's uh, foreshadowing for um, <laughs> which to, for, which to for, be for fair, they would to be fair. I think. I think they yes. were doing that by the payphone even before they got that. I see. I, see. I, I guess. I, I guess. Um, I guess because some people say that uh, everything started going wrong, uh, or at least rapidly wrong after the smartphone became a thing because uh, mm-hmm. it, it was a phone dumb enough to be used by uh, girls. Um, so. Let's see. Those are are those my impressions. I, this is not the first time that I watched uh, this film, by the way. Okay. This I is just the first I, time I did. Uh, um, yes. Yeah, thought agent. Sort of. What were your thoughts on it? Well, it's nice. nice. It's a very uh, you know. It's obviously a very um, experimental film, and um, I appreciated. Um, the effort, you know, obviously, I think, I think we all did. If I, you know, um, I didn't, I didn't really like the film. Um, I, I appreciated yeah. it and I uh, respected the film, but uh, I didn't, I didn't really find it that interesting. Um, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't know. It was. Um, it, it was quite yeah, like I... um, for uh, what it does. It's um, it is quite um, quite long um, really. You know, I'm, this might be you know this this might be my this might be my Zuma ADD coming out a bit, but uh, I do think it um, belaboured the point a bit. Um, and it's not as if it fails; it's just um, it does it it does it doesn't it, does, it doesn't quite um, I don't know. It doesn't it doesn't it it doesn't quite hit the spot or something. Yeah, <laughs> it's. Say. It has it goes through a lot of the movie without much follow through or message. I mean, you have about uh essentially only three segments in the movie where it condemns uh the girls and really only two. One is uh when they first get into Shibia. There's the random street protester who's an old guy, and he's talking about how the youth in Japan are losing their way and we need to pass things all on, which I thought was a pretty nice touch to just throw that in there. Uh, Anna loves putting in uh, like little things like that that can be dismissed as uh, incidental, but actually are supposed to be at the plot. Uh, then the second guy, then the mm. first guy they meet via subsidized dating just offers to buy them a really, really expensive uh, lunch at a Korean barbecue place, ten thousand yen. Uh, they decide. Uh, he also lectures them a little bit on how they need to focus and study, uh, and there's even a monologue where Hiromi goes, "Oh, I don't, really don't want to hear that from." A guy like that. And then you have yeah. like basically a full hour of just watching the girls sort of make these bad decisions, but the show but the movie isn't like trying to force it down your throat that it's bad decisions. You're just sort of watching it. And then finally you get to Captain Eeyore and, and he chews out Hiromi. And then she returns the phone, and then the film just sort of ends there. It's odd. And sometimes it's almost... I found it agonizing. Like, like to watch what they were doing, and... I, I, I guess it, it almost... It also made me feel some amount of sympathy for uh, teenage girls in Japan, because they are... I don't know how accurate this is. is It's probably somewhat exaggerated, but you constantly have, like, some guy coming up to them of, like, hey, do you want to 
go out with me and uh, and like get some food. I'll pay for the food, like ten thousand yen, seven thousand yen. Which uh, for for those who don't know, that's like a hundred dollars, seventy dollars, good money. Uh, and yeah, yeah. One, um, at, speaking speaking of 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 the currency, uh, I don't. Uh, I don't... Not really knowing um how um how the exchange rate works between like pounds and yen. I don't know. I get, I found it, I found it a bit hard to to, to uh, <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> sort of get an idea of like how expensive everything was. Like uh, is yeah. is one hundred and fifty thousand yeah, I mean, yen that expensive? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it, yeah, it, it felt like oh look, uh, 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 this is we are, we are spending uh, so many fucking units of uh, something. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. It's, it's kind of weird. Um, when I because I think ten thousand uh, imperial credits. Yeah. yeah. So, so basically, to give you an idea, through most of the two thousands and to today, uh, one U.S. dollar has equaled a hundred uh yen. So basically, you can u- view one yen as one U.S. cent. Obviously, the pound is slightly different. But uh, it's close enough to the dollar, so you can view it as uh, a hundred uh, ten thousand yen is going to be about a hundred dollars, or let's say eighty quid, and a hundred twenty thousand yen that's a thousand two hundred dollars, or let's say a thousand quid. It's expensive. I I see. I- this makes more sense now. I was like, I was like, so, uh, so, is it like a thousand pounds to like every fifty thousand or something? Or, I mean, that's, I mean, you know, that, that, you know, it is, you know, all right, enough about this current logic, current That's like stuff. too much. So I was like, I was like uh, deducting instead of instead of like using my brain and like you know using like you, you know using a um, online currency exchange or something. I just, uh, <laughs> I just thought, you know what, I could just eyeball this and you know I'll get. I'll, I'll, it's like, I get an it's idea, like, but, it's it, like but a, it was a problem. Yeah, money. Yeah, money and uh, <laughs> sex is like uh, some of the only things they seem to talk about. Almost, I mean, that might be a little uncharitable, but it it, it very much oh, is. Yeah, this, yeah. It, it very much is this world where. And on top of this, Hiromi has a boyfriend, uh, and she talks about it, but that like, things are sort of on their out and out with them. And the whole way they talk, uh, Hiromi talks about her boyfriend, and it's not unique, it, it all comes across as very superficially judging. It's like, oh, he doesn't call... Uh, call me when I want, and then he calls me in the middle of class when it's inconvenient. All it all comes across as like very superficial judging, and at the same time, you get the sense that Hiromi realizes that uh, what she's doing is, I don't know, a little too oddly judgmental and I guess you could say immature but at the same time she that's just the way she is and she doesn't feel like she can be any other way Hiromi is like the only the the main character in this who has some level of introspection but even then it's she has introspection but it's sort of like on the level of she can somewhat see what she's doing, but she has no real impetus to change or have it change her ways. It's very... It's like someone running on autopilot consciously realizes they're on autopilot, but just keeps being on autopilot. Yeah, yeah. I guess um, uh, um, when he said, like, um, parts of this film like, were, you know, uh, painful to watch, um, I I wouldn't really say painful. I guess um I guess one of the things that sort of tied and um, tied me over was um uh, just sort of um all um sort of seeing um what um, Japan was like in you know in the nineties you know in quite in quite a personal way like oh uh, yeah. I wonder what a uh, I wonder what a video store 
in Japan, you know, in 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 the nineties, would have looked like, oh look, um, here it is. Okay, it's not that impressive, I guess. <laughs> it's like yeah, the it... the, uh, um, the, the uh, video store um, in Japan looks exactly like the video stores used to look in England. Uh, so, <laughs> uh... um, uh, you know, but you know, it's kind of interesting still. Um, uh, yeah, I if guess, you uh... want to watch sort of a semi documentary on. Tokyo in the 90s and what it looked like and the real feel of it, it's definitely a good movie to watch. You get a very strong feel uh, towards the whole city and the way people interact and whatnot. Not that it's particularly a positive feel towards it, but uh, it's... It's not boring, I guess. I, I, it, yeah, it, it, it kind not... of makes you... It kind of makes you feel like um, there are things going on uh, behind those walls, uh, around uh, those corners and alleys, I guess. Something yes, like that. Yes, it, it feels very lived in. It uh, it reminded me a bit almost of like uh, the Yakuza games. Yeah, I mean, I think aren't uh, the Yakuza games also set uh, maybe a bit earlier, if I'm not mistaken, in the 80s or something? Yeah, something like that. And, and yeah, you do have like this open world with with all this character that you can walk through and all that. Right. Uh, I think so, so. I mean, I felt like so. So there. So there was the message that uh, I mean, the, the message that <laughs> uh, Angel goes, "I whatever is bad," and okay, we get it. But uh, oh, are you going to say? Are you going to say something, Sig? Uh, yeah, it's like li- literally just, and I feel like that's the real weakness of the film. the The message is just Captain Eeyore, uh, lecturing her for like a couple minutes, and that's the entirety of the message. And you could have almost just cut the movie down to that, and it would have been whole. I I guess um. There, there, there was sort of, um, um, I don't know, like, uh, it, it, it kind of felt a little bit uh, like, especially the scenes where the, it's a monologue of her just talking to herself uh, at the beginning and at the end. It felt a little bit like um, it, uh, the end of um, Neon Genesis Evangelion, uh, sort of. Um, it, it, I wouldn't say that Hiromi is exactly... Shinji, if uh, if he was a girl, <laughs> no, but... definitely not. But I I sort of get what you mean. Hiromi definitely has these uh, trademark traits of Ano himself in terms of. Uh, um, uh, I, I, yeah. I, I I I watched um, so I given that I watched um, the documentary about. Uh, uh, 4.0. Um, I, I guess I, I was kind of expecting to hear something something about love and pop because I, I remember you mentioning that. Uh, yeah, I I was completely wrong. It's a 2000 uh live action film uh that Arno did that is covered in there. Um, th- that's uh, sh- shikijitsu or something ritual or whatever yes. it's called in English. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um. Yes. I, yeah. What was it? But uh, uh, basically, Arno in that documentary is shown to be not exactly career oriented, but more like um, work oriented. Like uh, yes. he, 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 he he kind of gets um, gets uh, his um, self esteem, I guess, uh, from his work. Um, oh, not not just self esteem, but. Um, Satisfaction. Uh, that's that's another way to put it. Not not exactly happiness, happiness either. And I, and I kind of felt that that, that there was sort of a, um, a similar message here as well because um, it, basically all the other girls um, are moving on uh, and they're, they're not so fixated on the relationship that they have with each other. Um, but like they, they have something else going on in their lives or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but Hiromi does not have something like that 
uh, she, she just has that friend group which yes. would all, obviously drift away after after the, their trip to yes. Okinawa I think it was to Shibuya uh, oh hmm? well, the uh, oh you mean like later to the beach yes yes um oh, okay. um did they say that they were 16 year olds so I guess they still do have two years of high school but um, uh, still yeah uh, by the way that that girl who who um, uh, that girl in, in the friend group the one with the short hair who who goes on to become a dancer or something mm-hmm. uh, she she um, she also um um, I think uh, I think I wrote and sang uh, the ending so ending song for um, Great Teacher Onizuka. If you ever heard of it. Oh, really? I had. <laughs> That's kind of interesting. Yes, I mean, um, I think um, that uh, if I'm not mistaken, the um, the actress who plays um, Hiromi. Uh, she's also the younger sister of a more famous uh, uh, actress. So you know, it's uh, it's a sm- it's a small world. Yeah. Um, let's see what else does she see. Uh, I mean, the are you a um, are you a are you a dog person uh, or a, a cat person? <laughs> uh, I I am more of a dog person, but like the guy said, uh, cats do like me too, and I do love cats. Uh, I I'm, unfo- I- I'm unfortunately allergic to both, actually, but uh, I- I'll still like uh, try and pet them and say hi to them. Yeah, so I yeah, yeah. I'm, me... uh, I'm more like I'm definitely more of a cat person. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, but, but the funny thing, of course, is that in the film, uh, I mean, so, so when you say that you are a cat person, that means that you, you prefer cats, right? Uh, to agent. Uh, no, yes. No, yes. Hello? Hello. <laughs> uh, no or yes. <laughs> because in, in the film, um, um, so... So when when the when Hiromi are finally a, um, are you a, a a dog person or a, or a, a cat person student? Well, it it depends what what do you mean by that. Do you mean it in in the way that it's meant in the film? Because in, in the film, I'm just asking you a question. I'm just asking you a question. I I I, I guess um, I'm a cat person then, by which I mean that I prefer dogs. Uh, but because in what? in the film, um, um, it I think. The, the, uh, the, the quote, uh, the, the the director, or whatever, the the industry guy, um, who, to whom uh, Hiromi finally returns the the mobile phone, uh, says that uh, cat people um, prefer dogs and dog people prefer uh, cats. And Hiromi was like, uh, "What?" Uh, uh, I yeah. I don't think it's that. I think yeah, it says here. That cat people like dogs and dog people like cats as well, but that dog people uh, that cat people tend to be self centered, uh, and uh, dog people uh, tend to be more dedicated. Yes, I mean, exactly. It, 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 if you don't believe that, just uh, look at Witzko and Evangelion, she owns a cat. Um, yeah, yes. I mean, and uh, and uh, my star sign is a uh, Taurus. I see. I, I wonder what owning a penguin means, though. Uh, what, what's a penguin person like? And I'll call it uh, <laughs> Misato is a penguin person. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it means repeater. Spoilers. Oh, yes, of course. Um, yes. Um, yes, uh, you are a pedo and uh, you cuck, uh, you cuck 13 year old girls. Uh, let's see, what, what else is there left to say? So, I guess I, I think we have kind of um, kind of discussed everything that there's to discuss about it. Yeah, the uh, the shots in it are really nice, it feels like an experimental film. 
if you're interested in cinematography, it's uh, definitely a good uh, film to watch. But yeah, if you're just looking for... Uh, and all, obviously, if you're looking to track Dekiano's career, it's an interesting film to watch. Because it was his first live action. But speaking, speaking if of which, uh, looking for a fun movie, I, I I can't recommend this at all. Like you're going to be, I I sort of had a feeling of slight disgust throughout it, and I and I think you will too watching it. Um, if, you, um, if you if you have a friend who's like you know well, way too um way too into uh, Japan. You know, like you know, like 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 some like gay weeaboo shit. Um, just you know, this uh, this 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 movie might 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 um help their uh, mental condition. This yes, it it, it 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 is it is a recommendation by Paz, so I'm not so sure. Um, oh. so I mean, I I had already watched it, but um, when I asked him for for films no, like uh, Blood... no hate to Paz or anything. <laughs> Yes. Did um, you tell was um, recommend love exposure? So, so, so yes, basically when I asked him, um, yeah, yeah, he's cool. Uh, when I asked him for films like um, Love Exposure, he recommended Love and Pop and um, All About Lily Show Show. Uh, so was this was this as bad as uh, Lily Show Show though? No, no. Um, if I um, if I were to rank um, the uh, Japanese live action films I've seen, uh, all three of them, um, it will be uh, at the bottom of the uh, of the sandwich. It will be uh, all about Lee Cho Cho um, by far. Like uh, I did, I did not like Lee Cho Cho. I think that like that like did something to me, like how how asinine that film is. Um, and then above that is uh, Devon Pop. Um, that that I don't know. I'll give this film like a six. Um, maybe you know, maybe a seven. Yeah, um, I give it and a then six. and then above that, yeah, and then um, above that, I'll obviously give you know, I'll give, I'll give I'll give it to Love Exposure just because you know, I had I had a better time watching um, Love Exposure and that yeah, like uh, I don't think I said this in in the actual Love Exposure discussion, but uh, Love Exposure like actually uh, struck like a a um, emotional chord um with me, so yeah. That's, it's nice when that happens. When uh, yeah, it's I get I get uh, reminded of I get reminded of my uh, emotions. Yes, so, um, so there you go. It, uh, given that um, most people who I mean uh, even in, in the promotional material like that I watch on YouTube, like uh, they they kind of ever advertise. Uh, um, love and pop. Uh, like, like when I go and look at uh, TV, TV ads or whatever for for love and pop, or I think theater ads or whatever. Um, it, it, like they literally say that it's uh, it's by the director of um, Eva. Because it kind yeah, of... that was definitely sort of like the selling point for it. I think at the time because I have to understand this came out in '98. End of Evangelion would have been '97. So. Everyone was in the wake of Evangelion. Evangelion was the hugest thing ever, and uh, so so just to see, like, oh, what's the director of Ava doing now? Why is he moving to live action? Would be naturally interesting to a lot of people, but but I think it also speaks to the film's, uh, I don't know, in some ways mediocrity that it's still remembered mostly for that like this is the this is the project Anno did after Ava I, I don't think it's remembered on its own terms yes uh, I think yes uh, uh, how does it co- compare given that, it, that it's his uh, first live action how does it compare to, to his latest live action uh, Shin Godzilla Shin Godzilla yeah I've watched Shin Godzilla Shin Godzilla, I also have a uh, mixed feeling on. Shin Godzilla, at least, is a more conventionally made movie. Uh, Shin Godzilla, the first half of it is just Dr. Strangelove, and then the second half of it is uh, just a kind of generic movie uh, about putting 
uh, putting like the gas together or whatever to kill Godzilla. Yeah. So it feels. I know that film Shin Godzilla, very well thought of. Uh, got all these awards in Japan, like best film of the year or something like that. And, and it's trying to speak all this stuff about uh, Japanese, <laughs> how bureaucratic Japanese society is, how much everyone is passing the buck in government, how much no one knows what the fuck they're doing. Uh, I, I'm sure people anywhere in a parliamentary or a Republican democracy can relate. But uh, it's I want to kiss gang rise up. <laughs> uh, there, there, there seemed to be a kind of a feminist undertone in uh, in Shin Godzilla. Did you did you notice it, or is it just uh, am I just uh, I don't know? Hey, I, you, acting, you, you definitely acting. you could say that just because uh, one of the main women uh, that uh, helps them out is an American, and she wants to. She's in like an American Japanese, and she wants to run for president one day. And it's partially her lobbying I, I that helps the main character go ahead with his plan to kill Godzilla. Uh, yeah, I was I was thinking more of the the agriculture minister woman. Um, how how she she is more effective than all all these uh, all Japanese men. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I guess maybe, maybe I was thinking too much into it. Hmm. Um, did what, you um, yeah. Sorry, what um, what a Shin Godzilla reminds me a lot of is just is just a like you know a, a standard mid you know mid series episode of Ava, right? I mean that's you know that yes. that's kind of how we how, how it was structured. You know, there's there's a problem. You know, we can't you know we can't destroy this this uh, giant monster with with our um, our conventional weapons, and then and then you know um, the uh, yeah. the, uh, the task force um, comes up with like you know with um, with a um, invented solution. Um, yeah, that's... as like uh, as for the uh, the like feminism, um, I think I think Shin Godzilla is 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 feminist, uh, quote unquote, in the same way as like Ava is. Um, yeah. Yeah, just Honestly. just in terms of you have capable uh female characters who uh are on leadership positions, but it's it, it's nothing like uh a modern uh I don't know, Captain Marvel or anything like that. It's it, it's feminist in like the 80s sense of the term. Yeah, right, yeah. I mean, um, compared to um to um a lot of the films coming out now. I mean, like Literally, the the uh, the Western version of like you know of uh, Godzilla, like uh, um Godzilla versus 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 Kong, like uh, that um that film makes Shin Godzilla look like that film makes Shin Godzilla look look like a um, conservative film. <laughs> if you <laughs> if you watch them both quite close together, well, um, well, well, in some ways it is because a lot of it is like this wrangling at my gosh. America is just so controlling. We can't even like there's parts in Shin Godzilla where they they essentially have to beg permission from the US, I think, to like even bomb the thing or just this and that stuff. And the whole way through there's there's essentially two villains in that movie. One is the Japanese bureaucracy and one is Callous America. <laughs> and uh Sort of the thorough through of that movie is Japan and the young Japanese trying to overcome both. Yes. Um, uh, by the way, uh, I don't know if you have noticed it, but I posted a link to a clip of uh, Anno talking to to a bunch of prostitutes about uh, uh, Eva. Yes. Uh, as part of the promotional material to. Love and pop, of course. Um, well, it, it seems he was just trying to talk, and then one of the, uh, and then one of them starts naturally talking about, oh, I don't watch much anime. There was that new one, that uh, Ava thing. Have you watched it? Oh uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> uh, uh, Anu never lets on who he is. <laughs> but, but 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 I I think, uh, I think he, he goes um... to meet her at the end though. Uh. Um, 
but I, I don't know if yeah. she would recognize him though. And I, and I don't, I don't know if this is not staged yeah, either. Uh, yeah, um, that um, clip was uh, very confusing when uh, YouTube recommended to um recommended it to me like six months ago. <laughs> I was like, is this is this real or is this staged? I'm, I'm like, I'm not quite sure. Like, what you know? Why would I know? Like, for myself, filling up, like filling up, filling up a prostitute, but then like, yeah, uh, yeah. The YouTube realized... title is just Hideki Ano talks on the phone to prostitutes. So you come yeah, across yeah, that on YouTube. I was like, what? And, like... <laughs> yeah, I was very confused for a for a, a few minutes. Of, like, yeah, I was just I was just wondering what like what like why he would film himself doing that. Um, but yeah, it makes it all makes sense now. Um, uh, yeah. By, by, by the expected. way, uh, uh, in in the second part of the making of um, Love and Pop, um, basically there's uh, two short clips, I guess, um, of um, basically the, the one the Komi uh, talking <laughs> to talking to um, one of the girls who actually does in Jokosai. And uh-huh. uh, and then th- there's a clip of um, um, the porn director mm-hmm. uh, who, who who is there just on set. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and by the way, I think Arno um, later on helps helps uh, th- this director. It's, he's co- he's called Asan or something. I can't remember the full name. Mm-hmm. To to ma- make his own uh, artsy film because uh, okay. uh, the, the the JV actress. Uh, um, he was going out with killed herself, and I I, I, I think I Talk. think um, killed herself or something or died or something. Um, uh, anyway, uh, so so the, 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 the so there's I think he he just call he she just random randomly calls a girl um, for Angel Corsa and has um, has sex with her. And then midway, uh, just decides to I don't know, uh, um, just leave the set and go on a trip uh, to uh, to Hokkaido with that um, with that woman I mentioned, that that, that JV actress uh, huh. who is who is who is also dressed as a high schooler for no reason. Okay. Um, I, I guess I guess their plan was to film themselves. Going to Hokkaido while while having uh, sets essentially, and uh, uh, yeah, it's so weird. Yeah, what else is there to say about this film? I'm kind of uh, scraping, uh, scraping bottom. the bottom. Yeah, um, uh, we could talk a little bit about the NHK documentary that I posted up, and, and a little bit about uh, rebuilds in general. Uh, and how yeah, I've, I've, I've got a uh, I've got a uh, important question for you, Sieg. Um, mm-hmm. Which uh, which uh, Ava girl is your favorite? Asuka. I see. Um, I can't believe this. I'm still alone. I have <laughs> I have I'm yet to find anyone uh, who 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 has the same preferences as uh, I. Anyway, oh, what, what's uh, what, what's yours? You Ritsuko. 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 Okay. Oh, I, I've, I've seen like one person on, uh, yeah, me, l- like on forums. Maybe, maybe it was <laughs> you. <laughs> that, yeah, that okay. act- I'm very vocal <laughs> about it. <laughs> maybe it was. Uh, I, I, I just find it so weird because I, I guess we're on the Ava now. Which which goes a weird character in both the original series and rebuild, but mostly the original series because she's very distant. She's sort yeah, of I someone think, that's um, just manipulated think, by yeah. Gendo the whole way through, and there's well, no you know, real... is, she she does have a lot of a lot of her own agency, but uh, a lot of what she does, she, she just sort of lets happen. Yes. Uh, it's not like it's not that she like you know she she just does what she's told and she's well you know she's manipulated but she also does you know v- very much have a hand in you know have 
have a hand in things. Like, I don't think she's like a good character, but uh, I don't care. <laughs> uh, so sp- speaking of the length of Love and Pop, uh, we, we said that it's pretty long, but um, I, we didn't say exactly how much. I think it's, a, it's almost uh, two hours. And uh, yeah. I don't know. Uh, the first um, time it I... is. Well, let me get it up. Do we really need to know the exact time? Uh... Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. It's one fifty two twelve. I thought uh, it was shorter. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, I think that there's a couple of uh, two or two different versions. I think the, the dire- director's cut has like two minutes more or something, but it doesn't really matter. Um, yes, um, I. I, the first time I watched it, I, I didn't really feel like it was too long because I kind of enjoyed the the visuals. Uh, I normally don't care about the pretty colors, but uh, mm-hmm. um, I don't know. I, I kind of like the, because it's shot on a camcorder. Essentially, mm-hmm. I, I do I, I do sometimes uh, go on YouTube and search for like a random camcorder uh, footage. It looks nice, mm-hmm. and. Um, um, I, I guess the se- the second time I watched it, though, um, I still didn't feel like it was too long, but I I had to stop because I had something to do. So I I did watch it in two sittings rather than rather than in one go. Uh, were, were you guys able to watch it in one go, uh, or did you have to stop? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I watched it um, all up um, all at once yesterday, basically. <laughs> no, 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 no. I watched it. I watched it on Thursday. Yeah. Mm. My God, <laughs> this is uh, this is, like this is the problem with like having nothing going on in your life. Is that is that the you know the uh, days to sort of merge? Uh, <laughs> yeah, like here, anyway. I guess. Um, yeah. So, oh my God, uh, it's Saturday already! Jesus Christ! <laughs> my uh, uh, my uh, slipping away before like before my very eyes. Apparently so. <laughs> guess the lockdown's getting to you. I, I, think, it was, I think that it was getting to be like a year ago. That's not... <laughs> <laughs> I think that they're, they're going to screen. They're going to screen uh, the end of Eva in Glasgow, or was it uh, Edinburgh? I don't know. Uh, one of those two places, and I and I might go. I don't know. I'm not sure whether I should go. I mean, I've already seen what? the film like twenty times or something. But uh, oh, I, 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 I yes, I, I think that's a brilliant film like cinematographically i i said it wrong but yeah in terms of cinematography in terms of acting story everything that there is so much artistry in that movie that is the high mark of honor's career and it always will be yeah yes, EO, um, eoa is like is the best thing he's done I don't think I don't think anyone's gonna like. I don't think anyone can really reasonably. I'm, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure different. what. Uh, yeah, but, but uh, speaking of that documentary that uh, uh, that you mentioned, uh, which was helpfully translated by someone, someone on A on 4chan. So yeah, th- thanks to that Anon. Um, yeah, apparently, apparently there was also. So I read the thread uh, which you sent me. Uh, Mm-hmm. And uh, apparently, um, th- th- there was also a Kickstarter or something, a uh, crowdfunding thing, because uh, which had collected like uh, seven hundred and fifty fifty dollars to translate it. And well, th- th- this guy just translated it for free, so yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> see, I'm, I'm so. Uh, in that uh, documentary, Anno said that uh, Eva doesn't really mean anything to him. But uh, yeah, but he, yeah. I mean, do you buy that, or do you think that's that's just a pose? Um, I think and yes that... and no. Like when Anno says that in the moment, he means it, but he means that in the matter of I am so dedicated that I'm not going to give it any more importance than anything else. Uh, for me, everything is about keeping it, now, getting yeah, a work they, done. Yeah, and, so and, and thus, I'm, I'm not going to waste it above anything else. And, and, yeah, and that's sort of his view. But at the same time, Anno Evangelion has affected him. I think he's tired of Evangelion at this point and wants to move on from it. 
and probably has been for some time. But yeah, it, yeah, at least at least twenty years. <laughs> Yes, I'd say. Um, but, but but he himself talks about in the documentary that when he tried to go back and do other works, the issue he kept running into is he poured so much of his soul, so much of everything about himself in terms of the characters into Evangelion, but also in terms of everything he liked, everything he found interesting, has some aspect represented in Evangelion. And he always felt like he was just coming back to Evangelion no matter what he made. So I think him coming back to the rebuilds, coming back to make Evangelion, was partially, of course, uh, to start up his studio Kara, which lots of people have pointed out. But I think it was also maybe to resolve that with himself, to resolve within himself the way he keeps what, what, coming back to Ava and his themes. What did you What did you make of, I guess, his strategy? Um, I mean, because he thought that, uh, well, if he, if he made it, it would be the same thing all over again. So, uh, mm. so his strategy, from what I saw in that documentary, was... Uh, to just let his minions uh, do whatever, whatever the fuck, uh, uh, which, without without like saying whether it's good or bad, and uh, because he, he doesn't want it to be just another repeat this uh, continuation. Is, this, yeah, is, this, he, this, this is the George Lucas strategy, by the way. Yeah, he yeah. There, there's some. It, it feels a little bit like uh, those same documentaries from Lucas, uh, yeah. from like making the prequels. Uh, he he very much is the type of guy, uh, who he he is intensely self-critical and intensely self-critical to his, towards his own work. But at the same time, he doesn't want to be too controlling towards other people's work. And I think, sort of, because yeah. of his own self-criticalness, he very much wants to give the people yeah. under him a lot of rope to do yes. what they want with things. He, 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 he wants to, but he wants to. But what happened in the end, of course, is that he he just didn't like what, what they did. Um, so yeah, and what he, he came up with, too, yeah. Yes, but in the end, he, he, he just ended up doing, doing it himself. Um, so, so basically... Yeah, I, he, I guess he, we could talk... Oh. Yes, go on. I guess we could talk about that, like... In 4.0, in the documentary, it's mostly talking about it in terms of he didn't like the script for 4.0, and he kept making changes. So at the last minute, like he decides, I'm going to like scrap the whole script and like completely rewrite the introduction portion, which if you watch 3.0 plus 1.0 repeat, just, just call it 4.0, you can really get that sense because like a whole half of that movie is just dedicated to uh, Sh uh, Shinji in the village getting to know everyone, which is great for establishing stakes. And I actually quite enjoyed it, but it felt like a major departure from uh, the movie before 3.0 beforehand. Yeah, it's not... It's it's not surprising. I think uh, it, it wasn't surprising when I heard that uh, uh, there was no storyboard for it. And by the way, the documentary that we are talking about is the making of um, the the making of um, uh, Eva three plus one or uh, four point two or whatever. And, yeah, um, yeah. I, um, I, I don't think I, I don't think I really put this feeling into words, but. Um... In in three plus one, um, and also in three point three three, in a, in a way, um, nothing really belongs anywhere. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I, I I think I um, maybe you know what I mean, but uh, um, I, this this sort of um, distinct lack of um, geography, like uh, mm -hmm. oh, um, this you know this place is important because it's you know is Tokyo free um. Obviously, you know from from the original, some of the first two films, and that, and that, and that's significant because that's tied to uh, Japan, and also you know in the actual film, it's you know it's tied to like the um, health of the rest of the world. But um, by three point yeah. three three, everything is everything is detached, um, and there is an attempt to uh, reattach 
the severed connections in Freaks 1, but, you know, at, at this point, everything just sort of has this, well, everything's sort of, you know, covered in, Speaking like, of... red, you know, so so you can't you can't really tell well, where, where things are. The, the um, whole but world... also, everything just sort of has this nowhere and 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 everywhere feel to it so you, ca- speaking, you can't speaking. really um, identify with, with anything no speaking it's the, very hard speaking of detached uh whatever happened to the umbilical cords uh oh <laughs> I yeah I, I yeah i guess they yeah. just all have s2 engines by the time of 3.0 yeah, in general, uh, all sorts of world building is uh, lost. Uh, I, I actually watched uh, 2.0 uh, last night, just for like a little context. And 2.0 still talks a lot about like the sailing of rivalry and political issues with... Uh, with the Euro, in this case, making demands, and America making demands. Very much the same stuff you have in the original Evangelion. And obviously, 3.0, that's dropped because the world is destroyed. What's the most interesting is, I guess you could say, the retcon that happened from 2.0 to 3.0 almost. Semi-retcon. Like, the end of 2.0 has Shinji uh, starting the third... saving Rei, starting the third impact, uh, then in the after credit scene, Kaoru aborts it, and we get this a- after... and then you get the preview for, like, the next movie. Now, the preview for the next movie does not show... I mean, none of that footage ended up getting used for actual 3.0, it shows a actually pretty natural world that hasn't been completely destroyed by uh, this aborted third impact. Yes, I, I think I think what happened was that in, in three point zero, what happened was that uh, the tsunami happened, uh, the two thousand eleven tsunami, and I think Arno wanted to try to tap into the spirit of the time or something, but That's... I. But they didn't do a good job of at it, to be honest. That yeah. that's possible. I also said I was talking with a friend about it. Uh, he pointed out that essentially one of the issues you had was by two point Well, Shinji has sort of uh, completed his arc. The three point that was shown in the previews doesn't have a lot of Shinji, and didn't. Uh, just didn't have like the central character in it a lot. The central character probably wouldn't have shown up until halfway through, or maybe even the ending. Who knows? And uh, I think. Hmm? Um, I think. Uh, no, no, go on, go on. Uh, I I think the it's possible that he also decided to change the script because he felt that the original 3.0 idea would have been a little bit too expo dump fo- focused and not enough focus on the main character but i mean in the end what he corrected to i'd say was even worse than that because you just have 30 minutes of fight scene and then the rest uh, and then the next hour is shinji not getting a choice in anything just sort of moping around and getting pulled along by the skeleton of a plot and then the movie ends. It's... Yes, I, I, I feel like um, Arno is somebody who works better um, when he's under restraints. Uh, so, so basically, yes. when, he, when he made Shin Godzilla, he had the restraints of uh, basically having to make an action-packed uh, Godzilla movie. When he made uh, Eva, obviously, like he, he was under the restraints of the budget. Um, the time. The, time. the, 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 the... The thing you... I, I've often heard it said that in Evangelion you constantly had like... I know, I know. It's, it's going point, in different yes. directions. Yeah, yeah, Digibro made that point. Yeah, and, uh, that, and, that's about the time, yes. Not, yeah, not the budget, the budget was normal. The budget was normal, the problem was the time. Um, yeah, and, and you see that in terms of like the original Ava TV series it's not... 
it's constantly changing tones, like, slowly from arc to arc. Like, the first six episodes are a little depressive, uh, with a little bit of hope. Then, once Asuka and the rest is introduced, is sort of like the happy-go-lucky arc, uh, the action arc, that a lot of people that don't like Ava will actually enjoy. Uh, briefly going back, to, going back to Love and Pop, given that you had problems with uh, it being too long and all that, that mm-hmm. might also be because, well, again, uh, he doesn't have any restraints that he could do whatever, whatever he wanted there. Uh, and um, so, so maybe, so maybe that's because it's an art house film. So, so maybe that's uh, that, that's again Anno not being able to work properly when uh, he doesn't have restraints. Uh, so, 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 uh, so sorry about uh, uh, stopping you. Go on. Oh yeah, and uh, then you sort of have the third part, which is uh, spy sort of like the characters start spiraling into depression, you start seeing all these, uh, uh, all the dark secrets of Nerve and Sele, how, uh, spoilers, I guess, like, all the kids at Shinji's school are literally potential Ava pilots, uh, all this dark stuff, And, and meanwhile, Masato breaks down, loses her lover uh asuka starts losing her place in the world because she, are, are she you can't be about a superior original, ava are, pilot anymore are you talking about the original series so yeah the original know. series yes the okay. original series yeah yeah and, and then it finally culminates with uh like asuka's a depressed wreck uh Ray is dead and replaced by uh, a new Ray that sort of keeps the same memories, but is a completely different personality. And uh, Shinji is just completely depressive. Uh, and then Kaohu, uh like cheers, cheers him up for a bit, gives him some really solid advice, and it's like the first person he meets, or like one of the few people that gives him like unconditional love. And um, then Shinji's yeah. forced to kill Kaoru with his own hands. And, yes. and after that, Shinji is just gone. And that's why the first scene in End of Evangelion is like Shinji with his with his hair soaked and the, the implication is he was trying to drown himself in the water. It's incredibly depressive. Okay. Yes. <laughs> um, so, Sieg, what do you think of the theory that um, fly me to the moon? The moon. Let me see. Uh, I was going to see in the background, but we're. I've got uh, this. I've got this. So yes. Um, Sieg, what, what do you think of the theory? Well, that I have seen on Fortune anyway. Uh, I haven't seen it. Mars. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is uh, it. Let me sing. Let me sing in the background. Let me sing in the background. Yeah, you're gonna yeah. have to quiet it. <laughs> yeah. Um. A- anyway, put me um, down. Hang on. All right. Um. Anyway, uh, uh, you can turn yourself down, can't you? Um. So, see. Yeah. Oh, have you heard of the? Th- I mean, you probably have heard it, given that you use uh, image boards at least some of the time. Uh, I first heard of this uh, from That's Kino great. because I usually don't go on A because I don't know everybody's pissed off there. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, but but I also saw this theory in the thread which you shared about uh, about the documentary. Um, and by the way, uh, an interesting fact: uh, I think the documentary came out before the film. So yeah. 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 Yeah, so, words. Although, one to have, although one does have to keep in mind for that that the whole film ended up getting delayed because of COVID. Oh yeah, yeah. I guess uh, nothing is by design uh, when it comes to Anna. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, just happy little accidents. Well, except for uh, the rebuilds. That that wasn't a happy 
Uh, happy or little that's it. Uh, do we? Um, sorry. Uh, do we know why the why the last rebuild film was was like so uh, delayed and delayed and delayed? Mm-hmm. Uh, assen- essentially, what it came down to is one we actually see in the uh, documentary. Apparently, Anno had another breakdown after finishing 3.0, so he was obviously yeah, in a think. very, very bad state when he was uh, making 3.0, which I think comes across. That film is absolutely hopeless and, and like devoid of goodwill in it. I think that's what really makes it a kind of bad movie. But uh, afterwards, apart from, apart, apart from you know the the uh, the um, gay piano scene, <laughs> yeah. Apart from that scene, uh, yeah, there is no goodwill. That's the one scene of goodwill. But yeah, he, I after uh, uh, a, after that, he went on to make Shin Godzilla. Uh, I think he just wanted to make a break from it. And I think afterwards, they sort of chronicle it in uh, the NHK documentary. They just kept rolling around with script ideas. And Anno was very inattentive to it. And he was never happy with one script idea. So he kept uh, changing around ideas. And so the release date kept getting pushed back and back and back. I, I guess it's I guess it's the story of our mm. visual novel as well at this point. So, um, yes, I'm busy. I'm busy. I'm reading. I'm reading. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> yes. So um, I'm, I'm reading. I'm reading Mises. That's that, that's what's going on right now. If you want to, if you want to know how the <laughs> how how the visual novel's going, I'm I'm making notes um, as I'm going through huge econ books. So it's like I don't I don't I don't I don't, I don't, I don't look like an idiot when I write. Uh, the script's right. proper. Um, I'm also learning Blender, which is which is uh, also eating up a lot of my time too. Uh, come, uh, come to think of it, I I did see them use Blender, um, and um, maybe Anna should have read some Mises or something rather than uh, doing fuck all. Um, um, let's oh, I'm see. sure he was doing a lot in terms of that, in terms of like agonizing over it. Like they make it quite clear he was writing, rewriting, rewriting. Uh, but he was just never happy with it. Like there are, they, they show little parts of it. Where he's like, it does this scene drag on too long? Like, is Shinji talking just a slightly bit too much here? Yeah, yeah. Rem, to be honest, right? Um, I think I think if they if they had made that film in Blender, it 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 would have looked like it would have looked um, significantly better. I don't like uh, what what a soft software did they use, or, do, or is that unknown? I guess some like industry software, or, you know, or something. But uh, if some, you know, if some schmuck like me can make like you know a decent looking cup in Blender, mm-hmm. you know, with like barely any experience, then I'm you know, I'm pretty sure you can make you know quite a nice film using you know using Blender. Um, mm-hmm. If you have like a warehouse of animators, you know, <laughs> you know, working mm-hmm. working on it. Mm-hmm. But anyway, that's like that's over here or there. Um, yeah. Um, by the way, the, the question that I wanted to ask, I guess, uh, um, and the, th- the thing which I said what, that was mentioned in many threads about uh, about uh, Eva three point, what Eva four point or whatever, um, w- was that um, I, I first heard of this from Kino in the server, and um, I, I guess I was kind of reminded it, about it uh, in the documentary as well, and and that's that. Uh, well, um, Mari's character is basically uh, um, Anno's wife. Um, yes, I mean... <laughs> <Ryoko>. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah every, everyone talks about it, and it's sort of one of those things... I, I Watching through 2.0, I was shocked that she got the most characterization in that movie. Some of it actually inconsistent with 4.0, by the way. Like, she talks about how... Uh, it's her first time piloting Ava, and that uh, she doesn't like uh, uh, using adults for her own goals, but she sort of has to, very much seeing herself as a child, when uh, by the time of 4.0, they reveal that she's actually an adult that was like Fiyutsuki's, uh 
a student uh, tying in with uh, like that the uh, Sadamoto Evangelion manga epilogue, which is uh, really weird. Just just speaks a little to how they were making shit up as they went along. But yeah, yeah that, so that, um, I, might, I might have to head out for a little bit. Um, I I'll probably be back. Okay, that's all right. But uh, yeah, the thing with Mari apparently, uh, I I read this around somewhere, so I mean, don't quote me on this, but supposedly. There, you know Kazuya Tsuramaki? Uh, he was the guy who was like the main director for 2.0, apparently also really loves Asuka. And apparently they were even talking at that point about replacing Asuka's character with Mai entirely. And uh, Tsuramaki said like, no, no, uh, Asuka is really popular. I, I would not stand for this. And I think that sort of shows that the idea was from the start to have Mari be the uh, the eventual love interest because she was. I, I I said earlier it's sort of the spiritual idea of she's the one character that's outside of Evangelion that, as Anno ex- admitted, was outside of Anno, wasn't a part of him, and so. Shinji ending up with her was very much a symbolic thing of both Anno and Shinji moving on from Evangelion. Like, that was the whole... In, in a way, Shinji's whole plot is reminiscent of Anno's own uh, issues with Evangelion, where, like, the whole, the whole spoilers for 4.0, the whole reveal at the end is that Shinji keeps recreating the world of uh, Evangelion. And like every time another third impact happens, another instrumentality happens, he just recreates the, world. He, he recreates the world of Ava because he can't move on from it. I see. It's like a fucking Matrix, I guess. Um, yes. Uh, I mean, uh, speaking of Fuyutsuki, like, uh, 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 you probably heard us say this, but I, I didn't find it fun and funny when, uh, like, um, he, he was in his little space sort of thing, uh, looking like uh, he has said enough. Uh, but then again, Fuyutsuki always looks like he has said enough. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, you know, just floating around. Um, anyway. Uh, yeah, another another one of uh, Fuyutsuki's students, all right. Uh, anyway. Um, yeah, Mori as, as a whole is just weird. It, it, it feels like a lot of uh, missed potential, and, and, like, there was something more planned there, but they didn't, because of making it up as they went along and all these wild ideas 3.0 really is the crux of that tetralogy that really brings it down so much like half of 4.0 has to be dedicated to making up for 3.0 and making you care about other people and i believe based off of everything that it was that that uh, was laid out you do see some things set up where, like, in 2.0, they actually have that that key to Nebuchadnezzar MacGuffin uh, that lets Gendo be immortal in 4.0. I, I, did, I did feel like... Uh, uh, obviously, I didn't like 3.0. I thought it was trash. But uh, mm-hmm. at least I think it had, the, it had some action going for it. Uh, but, mm-hmm. like, oh, I mean, it did feel like, like they were in a fucking wind tunnel sometimes. But... Uh, yeah. Uh, I think it was still kind of better than the action in in uh, 4.0 for the reasons that we mentioned. Uh, See, I actually disagree there. I the the 3.0 action I found very very dull for like all the reasons everyone mentions. You you said it's like a wind tunnel. The comparison I tend to make is that it's like Power Rangers in terms of, like, there's no weight to anything. They're just sort of jumping around. But 
in 4.0, there, there's still a fair bit of that, but I really liked... Uh, there, there's one scene where Asuka's like sort of kind of clawing through this MacGuffin and trying to get to it and has to go beast mode in order to uh, get through it. And that was a really nice scene. And then there was also a nice scene where like the final confrontation between uh, Shinji and Gendo. I know you didn't like that and found that dull, but I thought that confrontation was just fantastic and a very logical conclusion to everything. And it's all yeah. like very well animated, and then it, it, they're, they're kind of having fun with it, where they keep uh, clashing with one another and mirroring one another as they start going through like set lands and whatnot, because they're they're going into the weird anti universe or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I mean, I, I I did kind of like uh, the almost psychedelic scenes uh, in in NGE and the end of Eva, but. I, here it's not like that. I mean, that it's. I mean, it, they're literally going with Max in the. I, I, I don't know. Uh, like, uh, they're 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 fighting with Max while uh, it's supposed to be. I don't know. It's exploring their psychology or something. Uh, it, I don't know. Uh, anyway. As back to Mari, I mean, uh, I I did like the way that she... Vo- I, I, did, I did like the scene. I don't know if it was the scene that she was introduced, but um, in 2.0, I think it starts off with her... Um, I, I watched the English dub for 2.0. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, I, I thought it, it was a pretty, pretty decent scene where, like, when she kills that angel and escapes... Uh, um, it escapes in that uh, capsule. Uh, uh, yeah. You know, I, I, I spe- especially liked uh, the, the line uh, where she says, uh, y- you want that arm, keep it, uh, and then ju- just fucking die. Uh, in the <laughs> yeah, she, she, yeah, actually very good attention to detail there, where, like, it shows, like, there are two wires on her arms inside the Ava cockpit, and then she detaches the one from her right arm. So, like, she's detaching her nerves from the right arm and and then thrusts the right arm in and sacrifices it. Nice, nice attention to detail. 2.0 in general is, like, nice attention to detail the movie. Like, yeah. that, that, that film is, like, every two minutes is something old, and then the next two minutes is something new. And... Taken from the perspective of 4.0, you can see the whole idea is that these characters are sort of subconsciously learning from their past selves to be better people. And it makes I th- you... I think, I think that uh, if, if Anno didn't want uh, the Rebuild series to be just a, a rehash, he, he should have changed the, the, the story from the, from the start. Mm-hmm. Um, r- rather than waiting until t- uh, 3.0. Um, I, th- I think by, by that point, uh, p- people were kind of expecting m- more of the, m- basically, uh, some kind of a blo- blockbuster adaptation, action factor adaptation. Yeah, uh, because that's very, but that's also because that's very much the direction in which 2.0 was going by the end. It was very much ending with Shinji really becoming this self-assorted character uh, rather than Yui saving him at the end, Shinji himself awakens the Ava. he reaches in and saves Rei uh, it, he, he's become a, a self-actualized character and from a perspective like that it's sort of natural to go in a more action-y Go and log on direction, and a lot of 3.0 feels like a desperate backtrack of like Anno realized he was pointing in that direction but didn't want to go that that direction, so he just arbitrarily drops things 14 years later, and uh, 
people start blaming Shinji and he just has to <laughs> deal with something that he can't really be held responsible for. Um, yes. um, going back to the d- documentary, uh, I, kind, I kind of felt like um, Anna was trying to use uh, live action techniques uh, in order to, to make the animation, probably because yes. his secret anime and just yes. wants to make live action. Yes. Um, th- th- that, that was uh, wa- what a lot of that um, motion capture, I think, was the reason why it was there, uh, in my opinion. Uh, oh, yeah. And, and, and also his, his strategy, his strategy of um, filming as much as, like, uh, you know, filming as much stuff as possible and then um, finding finding the film, the, the narrative, in in all the, the basically just ed- ed- editing together uh, a story at the end from all the stuff which uh, they they made. Um, that sort of thing, I think, uh, works better in live action. You know, Star Wars, um, and I, I mean, especially well, Star Wars. Maybe it's not a. I mean. It, it's not a good example because uh, they use a lot yeah. of uh, special but, effects. But but, but I get I, what you mean in terms of like when you're physically filming people, stuff naturally comes together because you look at this shot and it's like, ooh, that that looks really well. Like famously, the uh, 2008 Iron Man movie, which is which started the whole MCU, that thing apparently had like no hard script the whole way through. They were basically making up as they went along the whole time. And that came out really well. But uh, you're right. The issue with animation is that there's no background. You can't just have a actor uh, start improvising a scene or have a very basic script and then the actors do their own thing. Animation has to be entirely planned. You have to entirely know, because someone's physically drawing it, they they have to know. Okay, this character is going to run over here. This character is going to run over here. Say this, do this, whatever. You cannot. Uh, the animator has to either, and since you can't have like one animator doing everything, everything has to be coordinated. There has to be that idea. You're you're right. Of uh, where are we going to go with this? What did you make of the comparisons between um, Anno and uh, George, George Lucas? I've seen the made tons at this point. I think the comparison is a little bit more superficial than people want to... Uh, uh, is more superficial than some would let on. Because the thing is, George Lucas... Let, let's compare the two people for a point, for a second. George Lucas essentially wants to make more kids' movies. Uh, Star Wars, you, yeah, he really does. You, you look at you look at the behind the scenes uh, stuff in Star Wars. What is the stuff he's more most interested in? He's interested in all the creature designs. He's interested in all. Oh, uh, this design looks really cool. Ooh, this design really fleshes out the world. Ooh, ooh. But isn't that he, isn't that Anno as well, though, in a sense? No, like, uh, no, not at all. Anno, and and you can very much get this if you look at Evangelion. This was actually something that people were very miffed about in uh, Evangelion, was that some of the like greater plot threads, uh, especially like what are the angels, etc., was never explained. It was only ever explained in like apparently they passed out like a document in End of Evangelion. Yes, uh, I mean, and, but, 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 and there'd later be video games that would sort of explain. Yes, more but, more. but 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 I guess it isn't the idea that uh, look, uh, Arno is uh, what Arno was really is really interested in is uh, you know uh, Tokutatsu. Uh, you know, g- giant monsters and that their designs, and uh, he will just ha- add stuff from the Bible or whatever because it looks cool. Well, and, there's a certain uh, amount of that, but fundamentally, <laughs> Anno is the type of director that is interested in characters. He is interested in what is this character, what is this his struggle, what is their reason for being, etc. 
But but is, isn't that is, isn't that just in era though, or, or do you do you see that in um, his his other stuff like I don't know Gunbuster and uh, I mean I, Gunbuster is more of a conventional anime, but even then it is sort of like focused on uh, Noiko uh, and uh, her becoming like more mature, along with uh, I'm blanking on her best friend's names, but. Who just Onisan or something, yeah. Well, well, that, well, yeah. That's that's what she calls her because he's her, her Onisan, but she has an actual name. Who cares? <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, you, you, yeah. you're gonna ups- you're gonna upset the Gunbuster fans there. I don't know. I mean, everybody knows who they're I talking like that about. Film. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, everybody who has watched that film knows the we are talking about. But yeah, uh, I, I guess. So. I mean. Hmm. And I, I guess, uh, given that we are talking about love and pop, uh, love and pop certainly is um, is about uh, character. Yes, mm-hmm. Romy uh, in particular. It's a, it is a very con. But I, mean, I, I guess it's a biopic. I, mean, I guess uh, I mean this this comes from from the Eva period. So I, I wonder whether he has changed. Uh, I guess. Uh, yeah, I. I mean, hard to say. I mean, certainly Shin Godzilla is not a film that is super hyper-focused on individual characters. In fact, that's actually the downside of that movie. Yes. They almost feel like background. Yes, and, and that's, that's what he wants to... That's what, what the kind of thing that he wants to work, work on, like Ultraman or whatever next he's going to do. Well, I, I don't know how... Uh, he he's going to end up doing Ultraman or whatever. I mean, I'll, I'll reserve judgment on how he ends up making that. But, I mean, going back to the comparison between him and Lucas, Lucas is the type of person, he doesn't give a crap about the script. Well, that's not too strong, but he doesn't like having to deal with it. He doesn't like having to deal with that minutia. Uh, nor does he like getting super involved with the directorship or the cinematography. What he has is he has his own little idea of, like, here are the broad strokes of the way the film is going to go, of the way the greater series is going to go, and here are, like, some broader messages. Like, the prequels are all about, to a certain degree, 9-11... Uh, obviously, 9-11 happened after they started, but they were already heading in that direction. And it was all about the fall of the Galactic Roman Republic. That's what but, those films um, were about. But, but what, what about the argument that uh, the reason why... Um, uh, 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 sorry, NGE, um, Neon Genesis Evangelion, was better yeah. was because uh, it wasn't just... Uh, uh, Anno, but it was also uh, other people around Anno. Whereas now, um, Anno could just be the, the idea guy or something. Whereas now uh, that he's in charge, um, his min- thing- minions are not as good or something. I don't know. But the thing is, Anno was in charge. Like, you look at the production of Ava, he was completely the man behind everything, pushing everything in its in its direction. Uh, it's not like he had any... I don't think he had any less creative freedom Yeah, but, uh, but, 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 but I mean, I, I guess uh, you could say the same about George, George Lucas, though, couldn't you? Or not? Not, re- not really. Uh, not really, because in the case of George Lucas, like, let's say, Star Wars New Hope, uh, that was the only one where he wrote the script, and even then you had a lot of people tinkering with it the whole ways in order to make it work. Uh, famously, no one thought the film was going to work. Like, uh, apparently, uh, Alec Guinness, so Alec Guinness was like the only one, one of the few ones that thought, hey, you know, this, this has some potential. This could be something fun. Uh, and, excuse me. Yeah. You have, where, by episode five and episode six, Scripts are entirely written by other people, uh, story, etc. George Lucas sort of stays on as director, whereas I believe both, whereas I believe throughout NGE, 
uh, Anno was like writing the scripts, completely directing uh, where the story was going to go, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Like everything. So you mm-hmm. so can't even blame other people, I guess. No, no. I, I, I very much think both rebuild and the original series, and of course, end of Evangelion. Mm-hmm war Anno's creation first and foremost, and obviously every production is a collaboration, but I think they were very much what Anno was pushing for, and if you're going to subtract some stuff from the rebuilds, uh, I'd say it's mostly just the fact that without time constraints, Anno was allowed to constantly just mess at his own ideas and go, I'm not satisfied with this, let's change this, let's change this. And there was so much analysis by paralysis and revision after revision that I think it led to, by the end, a little bit of a muddled tetralogy. I see. I I, I guess uh, the the reason why they compare it with uh, Star Wars is because, well, uh, Pretty obvious, uh, I guess. Um, yes. Uh, 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 yeah. Um, another, I guess. Uh, another thing uh, about the about the documentary, by the way, um, which I noticed uh, was that uh, um, Anno is uh, sixty sixty years old now. Um, yes. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's been, and he's still active. Um, I yeah. do kind of like uh, like I did kind of like his attitude um, to work. To be honest, um, I I actually, found, I actually found it um, in its own way kind of. I was kind of shocked by, especially at the ending of that documentary. Uh, uh, like some reporter comes to him at the end as Arno's getting into the car, uh, and the. Uh, and the reporter's asking him, like, why do you throw yourself so much into your work? And, it's, and he says, because I can do nothing else, because I know nothing else. He literally does not know how to live other than throwing himself into this work, which would be fine if he really enjoyed that. But I think to a certain degree, it's more a view of, and and this is just my own psychoanalysis watching him in that directorship, it feels more like he's he's still never satisfied with a work, that he's still never satisfied with anything he makes, and he just throws himself into that to uh, cope with his own feelings of uh, self-hatred that he still has. It just so focus himself on something that at least I'm doing something productive. At least I'm pumping out something. I I think it's more like I I just care about what what I'm doing right now. um, And I'll keep on doing it till I drop dead. But it it is true. Uh, It is true that um, uh, I don't know. he, He doesn't seem to be a very positive he doesn't t- seem to t- take it in a positive way. No, uh, he he's not at all like uh, there are there are certain people that have gone through depressive stages and then come out and become uh, like quite happy and more well-adjusted people. Uh, that does not at all apply to Anno. Uh, I, I I was sort of like cracking up where he was like describing how he was like a picky eater and. Uh, refuses to eat meat and fish like pure artist yes yes uh th- that is true not a formal vegetarian or anything like <laughs> he just refuses to eat them and is picky about his vegetables too what did you make um of his view about uh anime like i think he said something like um um like he, he, he if you are, if you are, you know, when some, when the journalist asked him um, if you are proud about like uh, being able to reach a high place um, in the in the anime industry, like uh, 
it's like <laughs> that's nothing to be to be proud of. <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, do you agree with that? Yeah, he like I said, he's intensely self-critical. And part of that is like being very critical of the anime industry as well, which I mean every author is at point at this point. Miyazaki is, Tomino is, no one's happy with the way things are. But the thing is, like, I feel like mm, it's putting I don't know, but someone like Tomino would still be like somewhat happy to be in his position. Uh in, in the position he is in. Tomino himself. Uh Yoshiyuki Tomino for context, the uh director of Gundam. Yes. The Ano is not. Uh, Ano again just he feel he feels like nothing's good enough. I think. Uh, yeah. I, I f- yes. I, I for ex- for instance, I don't think that uh, Tomino has uh, such a negative view. No. Um, no. Of he Gundam, does not. Of Gundam, um, the way that uh, Ano has towards Eva. <laughs> uh, yeah. Like, uh, I, I don't think Tomino would say like, uh, "Oh, I don't care about uh, Gundam." He doesn't really mean, mean he, anything to. Me. He has said that about one show. He said that about Victory Gundam because he he didn't like the way it turned out and he was super depressive when he was making that. But everything else, yeah, he'll stand behind his work. Uh, And you can really tell in terms of his more modern stuff, be it Turn A or G. Reco or I haven't watched King Diner, but I sort of get that impression. Or like something like Brain Powered. They're all trying to be optimistic works. They're all trying to find the good in people, uh, even if there are all sorts of rough spots around the edges. And Brain Powered is like a really fucking dark... Like, you you wouldn't think it's dark, but it's its own dark show in its way. Like, this alien spaceship crashes on Earth, and it's going to go up into space. And, yeah. and like, oh, let, let, let me just let me just finish a moment because this is the, the the twist to it. The scientists uh, discover this thing and realize that when it goes up into space, uh, it will suck out the life energy of anything on Earth. And all these cynical scientists just go, "Yeah, that's fine with me. We'll stay on board the ship and not be uh, and not be affected by it. Let's let's support this." It's like, God, what, what evil people! Did you feel like the ending of um, of Love and Pop uh, was uh, positive or negative? Given that this mean, is, we, are talk- we are talking about uh, Anno, and given that uh, he has a thing for negative endings, I guess. I mean, it just sort of ends with uh, Hiromi. Getting chew, chewed out, and th- and then she feels guilty about it, and well, then I mean, that's I'm... sort of it. There's not uh, much more to it. I mean, w- wasn't there that? Uh, um, I don't know. Uh, with them, them just walking happily or something like a uh, while well, happy so place. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, 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 I don't think it was supposed to be sarcastic. If you if you see what I mean. No, no, it was definitely supposed to be the idea of she's slowly moving on, and then them walking through the alleyway is just some random, uh, like, non-canonical scene, almost, I guess you could say, that, that, that sort of shows, like, I guess, change in mood. I mean, um, I, I have this impression, and I don't, I don't really have any any evidence for it, but I have this impression that uh, Anno was not always uh, so pessimistic. Like when he was making yes. Eva, I think it was when he was making Nadia or something that uh, uh, it started. Um, yeah, I sort of got that impression uh, from the documentary that starting out he was less depressive. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. But. Uh, yeah, I I think he to a certain degree he always had this feeling of inadequacy. Of course, he had uh, 
abandonment issues with towards his parents, which is uh, the reason that plays such a heavy part in Ava. Like, uh, Sh Shinji has abandonment issues, Asuka has abandonment issues, Ray doesn't have fucking parents, uh, um, and, Mas and Masato sort of has abandonment issues, too. It's like all the four main characters there. I, 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 learned, uh, I learned something new from the, um, from the documentary, which I did not know about uh, Anno's father, and uh, <laughs> the fact that he was an amputee. Yes. Uh, yes. That he, he, he lost a leg uh, while cutting a tree or something, and yeah, I, I guess it, it, I guess it was uh, kind of sweet uh, that that then uh, he, he said that uh, because of that uh, he, he liked uh, how the Max, um, you know, uh, would sometimes uh, lose their limbs, uh, but uh, you know, and but still look uh, heroic or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I mean, to be honest, I, I've also, I've also, I also kind of used to like that uh, back when I was watching when, when I was a kid and I watched um, stuff like Mazinga. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Um, well, in, in in those two cases, I mean, like, I think I think uh, the, the limbs would come off as part of a special attack or something. Um. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that that goes back all the day to Astro Boy, if I'm not mistaken. I haven't watched it, though. Yeah, uh, I'm not big into Astro yeah. Boy, so I couldn't tell you. Right. Uh, let's see. I think... Is, is, there, anything else to, is there anything else to say about uh, the documentary, which uh, you think we didn't mention? Um... Oh yes, uh, uh, did did did, did Anno seem like uh, seem like? Uh, because I think I think people are kind of, when people are making the comparison between Mari and uh, um, um, Anno's wife, is that, is that they're, they're, they're kind of saying that oh look, uh, uh, look how pathetic uh, Anno is, like uh, like a hempecked husband. Uh, Glorifying his wife or something. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I, I, a lot of people were making that because, like, at this point, everyone's very like, "Oh, how how, how dare you show anything?" Uh, th there's a lot of insecurity because there'd been so much white knightery beforehand. Now it's sort of like reversed to the point where it's like, "Oh, you, uh, you don't show that you're the boss of a woman constantly, and that's just cuckery." Uh, I thought their their relationship, uh, to me at least, see seemed healthy enough. It, it's came across very much like uh, Miyoko very much was the one that was sort of mothering him through a lot of it, whereas he very much, uh, sort of did his own thing. Ano, like he he sort of like tacitly accepts Mayoko's presence and appreciates it, but doesn't doesn't necessarily go out of his way for her or anything. Yes, I, I, um, I, I, Anno, of course, is famous for being an otaku, but uh, yes. um, do you think that now um, he has become a nomi? Or, or do, you think, do you still think that he's an otaku? Uh, I don't even like questions like that, because I mean, if you're talking, well, in terms of, yeah, the 4.0 literally ends with Shinji becoming a salary man or whatever. So it is certainly in terms of he's trying to get to, like, get otaku, like, stop sitting in, get a career, get something. Like, a lot of people have pointed to, like, 3.0 having this meta narrative of like uh Shinji being frozen in time 14 years being like people who got obsessed with Ava and then did nothing for 14 years which is like eh, it's no light meta narrative but it doesn't really fit since uh Shinji was doing nothing wrong but be that as it may there's Shin it's very much this feeling 
And I mean, even in Ava, though, you had that. Of uh, he very much was trying to get people to get outside of themselves, both to have a career, and I think also to really find uh, something they love and, and something to do. In End of Evangelion, it ends with that same message, but it's a lot more skeptical about it. It's sort of like. Anno's not even sure whether he can find something to do, but he knows that he must. It's sort of like that fatalistic, determined view. Yeah, where, I, I guess... Where, yes, I guess... Go on. Where, whereas in uh, 4.0, uh, it's a lot more... Like, Sh like Shinji just gets on with it and uh, is... Well, with his regular, uh, with his new girlfriend and whatever, and I think a lot of people, mostly otaku, were a little bit bothered by that because there's not as much build up to it. I mean, it sort of works okay in the movie, but there is not as much build up, and it, it feels like more disconnected from where Shinji and let's say the average otaku might be. He, he obviously can't relate as much to them as he could back when he was making End of Ava. Mm, I, I mean, it's it's a very positive ending, but uh, I mean, I don't know. Uh, throughout the documentary, I, I didn't feel like he was that positive, I guess. Uh, no, no, I didn't either. That, that's, that's sort of the interesting thing. Uh, but because, like, uh, you, you, if you... I guess you could say that oh, when he made um, the end of him, like uh, oh, he was um, uh, he, he wasn't into it. Um, uh, but but he, I, I guess uh, he doesn't seem that jolly uh, here. No. Yeah, yeah, yes. Well, he he's also not jolly by temperament. But you're right. He he he. I think it might just be more that he's sort of disconnected from that subculture at this point. You could say that. Oh, oh yeah, and I think it's probably his age um, as well. And I think it's also with a lot of other old, uh, older directors uh, uh, criticizing anime or whatever. Um, it, 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 basically, the, um, the references to stuff... Uh, um, it, it has kind of um, moved on, uh, I think, to, to other things uh, which they do not care about. Like, uh, because back then, I think uh, uh, a lot of anime was about sci fi, um, and, uh, and just for one example, and it's, uh, I, I don't think uh, anime now is mostly, mostly like an extension of um, science fiction. Yeah, um, it, there very much was more uh, more science fiction, more fantasy. It very much was, oftentimes anime was trying to tell adventure stories. Uh, that is a lot more rare today. You have a lot of what are either slice-of-life shows, romance shows, or isekai shows, like being dropped in another world, which theoretically are adventure shows, but they tend to end up just being such, oh, this is an MMO. It's, 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 they're like, basically sit, sitcoms for Otaku, really. Yeah, say whatever you want about Sword Art Online, criticize it, whatever. At least it tried to make it into, like, an actual action anime where, like, the, the character went through struggles and whatnot. Like... <sighs> Half these, most of the isekai shows that are around don't even do that. I, I guess, I guess people for people who want that sort of thing, uh, the only thing which is left is basically shonen, uh, shonen anime manga. Um, no, uh, shonen. Yeah, there were a couple splattering of mechas here and there. Back Arrow was a pretty interesting mecha anime that uh, came out recently. What? Uh, uh, what? What is it called? <laughs> Hero. It, the uh, premise is it takes place in some sort of little capsule world 
where they're sort of surrounded by walls, very much a la Attack on Titan. There's sort of like this Chinese-style monarchy versus this uh, European-style republic. They're constantly feuding with one another. And it focuses on a, like a little group of villagers that grow up in a neutral zone. And this main character drops from the sky in these pods. And apparently these pods regularly come down to their world. But for the first time ever, rather than having weapons or something else weird like that, a person is inside. And apparently there's this prophecy that this happy-go-lucky person who, who uh, is very driven and motivated, that he will destroy their world. Ah. Yeah, I, I, speaking of Attack on Titan, I, 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 pro probably the reason why it got so popular is because maybe people still want to, want to, to have some kind of an adventure thing. They do. They still very much do. And uh, honestly, Attack on Titan both was very good as an action anime and also very good when it delved into like more political topics. Like race was a very big focus towards the later seasons. And it was very, very focused in terms of like never trying to paint one race or the other as like this group of monsters. Even the people that, like, uh, quote-unquote discriminate against others, they have logical reasons for doing so. And, uh, so, like, some of the commanders that use the, uh, the Eldians, for example, they're doing so... Uh, they, they don't randomly hate them, for the most part. Uh, they, they treat them like humans, but they're also supportive of keeping them in their place, because... Uh, well, there's all these issues if they don't, which are, like, spoilerish reasons. Yes. Um, going back briefly to Love and Pop, um, I, um, have you seen that... Um, because th there's an angel of course, I, uh, you know, compensated dating anime and manga uh, called uh, Rental Girlfriend, uh, mm -hmm. which a, a lot of people seem to hate uh, as uh, do I. I mean, I haven't watched the, uh, the anime, but I've Read some some of the manga, and uh, I don't know. It's some of the most awful, awful simpery. Uh, yeah, I, I I didn't watch it or anything like that, but I know the basic premise is the main girl is literally like sh she's a prostitute, and she's the main love interest that the main character will probably end up with, and that was just sort of like so. <sighs> Silly, I guess you could say on the face of it that I just didn't have any interest. I mean, I, I mean, if it, if 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 it was an actual prostitute, that that might have actually been interesting. But uh, now we are going to pretend that oh uh, well, um, <laughs> this is normal and healthy or something. Yeah. Uh, and uh, like uh, there's no uh, set or anything because uh, this, this is just a rom com, so we can't t yes. take any, anything seriously. Yes. Um, I, I, but I think what, yeah, I, I guess the reason why I brought it up was that, yeah, well, if you if if you watch that trash, then you might as well give uh, give Love and Pop a look because it's uh, it's a much better, well, not anime, but uh, <laughs> close enough about uh, uh, about that topic, I guess. Um, well, yeah, the thing. Is that uh, that uh, like what is it? Domestic girlfriend is the name of it. Yes, uh, that, yes. Yeah, domestic domestic girlfriend. That that show is trying to. It's trying to be a rom com, like like you said. Essentially, it's trying to be like a romance show, and just f very much focused around these modern elements and trying to ignore the fact that they're there, trying to ignore these elements that are really rather distasteful. Yeah, I mean, whereas, it's... It, it, yeah, go on. Yeah, where, whereas this Love and Pop movie is very much about shoving your face in uh, 
this is exactly what it is. Although that, that might be too strong a word. It's not even that it's shoving his face. It's very much like it's all filmed like a documentary, really. There's there there's very despite the amount level of cinematography in it, there's very little attempt to over dramatize things or anything like that. It, it it you could be forgiven for thinking almost that it was a documentary of actual events. Yeah, I think um, the, the reason why domestic girlfriend or whatever um, it, it just so fucking distasteful I, for me anyway, it's, it's uh, that. Um, but you basically have the protagonist uh, constantly just giving money to, yeah, uh, yeah just uh, I, I, because like in a lot of in a lot of rom com anime, where like there's girls who like the protagonist for no good reason at all. Uh-huh. Um, at least I don't know. At least it's more su- supposed to be. Mo- it looks more innocent, I guess, or something. Well, yeah, uh, the whole idea is usually that it's it's like childhood love. Well, a teenage love uh, that is sort of like your first love, and naturally that's a little bit more innocent, and and, and thus you can sort of get more behind uh, why a girl randomly uh, falls uh, falls in love with a guy that necessarily doesn't have the most going on. Oh uh, yeah, whereas a domestic girlfriend, I again outside looking in, all I've seen is very smattering of clips. It's sort of going for that. I know they have like a blue-haired childhood friend that uh, wants to be with the main character, and the main character is just dropping like a sack of potatoes, as like always happens in those shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe it's not the right comparison, given that it's a different genre. But uh, I don't know. Yeah. I just, yeah. I... It just—it's just that it's not—it's um, not uh, like one of those stories uh, uh, set in high school where like uh, there's a harem for no good reason or whatever. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. I think. By the way, earlier you mentioned. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you you meant uh, so so basically when you said uh, when you said that uh, the reason why uh, uh, Eva became kind of a mess um the original series i mean mm-hmm. it was not because of the budget but uh, because of uh, the budget was all right but they didn't get enough time time constraints um, they did start to face budget issues after like episode 19 where unit 3 and toji died because apparently what happened there was that scene with of them ripping up the ava was so gory that some sponsors pulled out, and uh, that actually really hurt them production-wise afterwards. But before then, they'd actually had quite a decent budget. I see. I, I, I can't remember whether whether Digi mentioned that. Um, mm. So yeah. Um, so that that means that you have watched Digi. Digi Bro. a long time ago. That uh, <laughs> another poor guy that's being led down a bad path. I mean, um, do you think it was a logical progression from what he was doing or um, something else? Uh, Ano, you mean? No, Digi. I I haven't watched that much of his stuff. I, I don't. I, I don't want to get into e celeb drama, to be honest. I mean, and to be honest, I never paid the most amount of attention to him. I, I mean, you, yeah, I, guess, you, I guess the reason that I asked is because um, for for some reason I keep on um, coming across people who have watched him and uh, who who used to watch him at least. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'm. Kind of, I, I guess I'm. I guess I'm just going around asking uh, what happened and whatnot. Because uh, I mean, I. I mean, I mean none of, I, but, none but, but of, you mentioned that uh, this is just a celeb uh, drama. But uh, I mean, we were talking about Ano, and and that's just uh, some um, 
you know, cel- cel- uh, celeb- uh, celebrity drama as well. Ah, uh, but you see, it is not a internet celebrity. It's <laughs> someone who does things in real life. Yes, yes. Um, you know, in anime, anime is real life, of course. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, anime Janai. Yeah. Uh, have you watched uh, that anime snob? Uh, that anime snob, I I remember watching uh, some of his stuff a very long time ago. I remember finding him, like, he's been doing that shit forever. But uh, I saw you've done, like, a few collabs with him. I've always found him, how you can say, and this is just impressions from, like, 10 years ago, maybe not that long, but a long time. Don't worry, he, ha- he has some changed a bit. Stuff. Oh, he hasn't? Okay. Uh, excessively nitpicky, uh, entirely, f- sort of a personality type that's entirely focused on plot, doesn't, isn't so interesting on themings and characters. The type of person is like, oh, wow, look at these plot holes. Which... <sighs> Yeah, I, I, I guess. Like, I mean, no. I, I mean, it's, I get, I get. Yeah, go on. Like, at the end of a day, a the point of a story is not to have a coherent plot. C spot one is a coherent plot. No one wants to listen to it. The point of a story is to provide theming. It's to provide a message, and also to a certain degree, interesting characters emotional reaction, all that type of thing. Anyone who is, like, having a complete... Obviously, your plot needs to be logically coherent to an extent. If it goes beyond those reins, then it really suffers. But ultimately, the most important thing is the theming, is the characters, is all that type of stuff... Uh, the plot itself and the plot making sense is the glue that upholds that. Uh, I, I, I just feel it's a case of bad priorities for him. I, because he kind of present, he presents himself as the alternative to, uh, I don't know, fucking Gigak um, hyping uh, up anything uh, mm-hmm. coming up in, in any season. Um, but, yeah. Uh, I mean, it, but I mean, is the uh, constant cynic towards everything any better? I mean, a- again, I haven't watched his stuff in forever, but that's always the impression I got of him. Uh, but like, don't that, you... like, same P- type of person. Uh, do you know, like, uh, Wacky Modder 84? No, I don't know him. No. Oh, uh, oh okay. He He's like some Gundam YouTuber. I don't think he's made anything recently, but like, made a zillion videos on how much he hates Sea Destiny and oh my god I really hate this show and I've and he's admitted this I've watched it a dozen times to know how much I hate this show and all the ways I hate I was like you get a I mean, life man uh, but I guess um Snob claims that uh, the reason why uh, anime has gone to trash is because uh, uh, people don't have standards like him. Um, blah blah. blah. You, you, but you don't buy that, I guess. I, I I wouldn't disagree that the issue is that people don't have standards, but uh, yeah, but 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 I I don't know that his standards are necessarily better. I, I haven't uh, seen him. Uh, I I, again, I haven't watched any of his stuff in um, a, g- how long. A, d- did you feel, I guess, um, hmm, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think he, he cares about the plot too much. Um, hmm. w- w- what did you... Th- What's that sound? Hello? Uh, that is Husky Commander. Bye! Yeah, bye. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> that was pretty loud. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, anyway, I think um, I think I would give uh, Love and Pop uh, a seven out of ten too. Um, yeah, that that sounds like a fair score to me.
Yeah, for for me, just a six. It's it, it's it, it's an all light movie. It's an experimental movie. I guess in some ways, um, I don't know. It sort of reminds me of there was this Kurosawa f- film. Um, I, I'm blanking on his title. Hold on, let me look it up real quick. Kira Kurosawa. Filmography. Filmography. So basically, Kurosawa had this film. Obviously, Kurosawa loved doing all sorts of samurai films, that type of stuff. And yeah, the film he made first. He made Kagamusha and then Ron. Now, Kagamusha is sort of about... Uh, it's actually based off of Takata Shingen. And the idea is Takata Shingen dies and this random layabout uh, they, they get uh, to to impersonate Takata Shingen. And he sort of becomes inevitably more attached to the cause, even though he's just a puppet, than a lot of the people, the actual family and surrounding him. And then there was, five years later, Kurosawa made this film called Ron, which was basically uh, King Lear in Sengoku, Japan. It's just uh, like uh, the good third, uh, third son tells his father that well, gee, you you raised us in a uh, very violent and backstabbing times. Uh, if you just hand over power equally to all three of us, we're going to end up killing each other over the power. And the father takes like such uh, takes such anger and umbrage at that that he banishes his youngest son. But of course, the youngest son is proven correct. I guess a long, rambly way, I was saying Kagamusha, in so many ways, in terms of the way it was filmed, in terms of everything, felt like a prototype for Ron, and oftentimes felt like it dragged too long, like it just didn't have nearly as much to say. And that's oftentimes what I felt like with uh, Love and Pop. That it just sort of dragged and didn't have much to say, felt very experimental. All right, and uh, on that note, uh, uh, let's call it a day then. Uh, Yeah, that concludes our discussion about uh, Love and Pop.